Hello and uh, welcome today. Thank you very much for tuning into our webinar for Scams Awareness Fortnight um, this June 2021. We're absolutely delighted to have you with us. Um, we are the two citizens advice services in West Sussex and also West Sussex Trading Standards. And I'll give you a little bit more information about our two services in just a second. So what are we here for today? Um, we're going to be giving you some information to help you to spot, avoid and report scams. Um, we do have some papers to prompt us. We will try to keep any rustling to a minimum. Um, and just to say before we start that all information is correct as of today, um, but things may change over time. Um, so please always um, check the Citizens Advice website or contact your little local citizens advice for the latest information. So first of all, um, before we start talking about SCAM specifically, I'd like to just introduce our organisations and also our guests today. Um, so we are the Citizens Advice Services in West Sussex, that's Citizens Advice in West Sussex North South East, and also Citizens Advice Aaron and Chichester. Um, we are charities giving free confidential advice to people on their rights and responsibilities, um, helping people to move forward with their problems. Problems, many of which impact mental health and well-being. So, for example, uh, money and debt, employment, benefits, discrimination, and much more. And we're also here as well with West Sussex Trading Standards today. Um, trading standards are responsible for the legislation which regulates foods, goods, services, and businesses in West Sussex such as making sure that food and products are safe, um, safeguarding the vulnerable, watching out for rogue traders and much more. So today we have with us Tracy um, from Trading Standards. Um, Tracy is a community support officer um, and Tracy usually would come out with us um, on events um, in West Sussex for Scams Awareness Fortnight, but obviously this year that's a bit tricky. Um, so we're doing this online webinar instead. We also have John with us, who um, is a very experienced Citizens Advice advisor. We're absolutely delighted to have John here today. And we have Paul. Um, Paul is the Communications and Campaigns Manager for Aaron and Chichester Citizens Advice. Um, and finally, I am Claire and I am in the communications team at Citizens Advice in West Sussex, North, South, East. So that's who we are. Uh, and now I'm going to talk about why we're here. Um, so today we are going to cover um, reporting, um, spotting and avoiding scams. And some recent citizens advice research has shown that six in 10 people in the southeast have been the target of a scammer since January this year. Um, and scams can affect absolutely everybody, no matter what your age or background. Um, and that's why this year's Scams Awareness campaign is so important. So for two weeks, every June, um, there's a campaign which is run by the National Citizens Advice um, and Trading Standards and working with the local citizens advice and trading standard services. Um, we use social media, um, events like this. Usually, as I said, we would go out to supermarkets, libraries, etc., to help share information with people to help you spot, avoid and report scams. This year, um, we're finding that scammers are really exploiting the pressures that the pandemic is putting people under. Um, we know that certain groups of people are more at risk of being contacted by a scammer. And unfortunately, this would include people um, who may have a disability or a long term illness. 45% of people um, said that they had been targeted. And during the pandemic, these are, might be people who had been shielding. More than half of people um, who have lost personal income due to um, the pandemic have also been contacted by a scammer. But scams can affect everybody, including young people. And we know that people in their 20s are particularly being targeted. So this is about taking back control, being empowered and not being ashamed. This is really important. Not being ashamed if you have um, fallen for a scam. Because scammers know so many clever, sophisticated ways of convincing you that they're real. Um, and we're going to highlight some of those today. So today we're going to focus particularly on financial scams, but there are many others as well, um, such as romance, social media scams, fake competitions, online shopping scams and more. If you'd like to lay, us to lay on any more of these sessions to focus on other sorts of scams, 
please do let us know in the comments. We'd absolutely love to hear what you're interested in. And finally, just to say before we kick off, if you think someone's trying to scam you, it's really important to act straight away. And we're going to give you some information today to help you do that. So first of all, uh, my first question is just to keep it really simple, as there may be some people who aren't really sure. Um, what is a scam? Um, and first of all, I'd like to ask that question to Tracy from Trading Standards, please. Uh, thank you, Claire. Um, well, you know, keeping it simple, there's lots of um, uh, ways you can describe a scam. But basically, it's um, trying to steal your money, your personal information, or, da or data from a person or an organisation. Um, other names for a scam include uh, swindle, fraud, hoax, con, cheat. Um, and as Claire said earlier, common examples include romance scams, social media scams, and many more. Thanks, Tracy. And yes, we're actually going to be giving an example of a social media scam um, later on in this session because they're so prevalent at the moment and really easy to fall for. So today we're mostly talking about financial scams um, and we know that they're really common at the moment. But what does this actually mean? Um, Tracy, I wonder if you could help us to understand that, please. Oh, well, there's been a significant increase in the uh, number of scams relating to financial services um, reported in the past year. Um, for example, adverts offering fake get rich quick uh, schemes, phone calls, texts, emails, pretending to be from your bank, um, asking you to move money or to provide uh, your personal details. Uh, scam emails or automated calls pretending to be from the government or an official company or an offer of a pension review um, that's come out of the blue. And have you seen any examples of those um, at Trading Standards? Well, I have. Um, a couple of years ago now, um, I went out to a lady in Littlehampton, uh, totally um, unrelated, really. Um, but what was discovered was she had a telephone call from her bank saying it was the fraud department of her bank and that there was um, her bank account had been compromised um, and she would need to move her money into a safe account. Um, three occasions over two days she went down to the bank, um, transferred large sums, sums of money um, the bank did go through their list of questions saying, you know, what's this, what's the reason for this transfer? Has that somebody asked you to transfer the money? Um, she denied, um, she denied saying that anybody had asked her to transfer it. So the bank went ahead, transferred uh, this money. £45,000 she lost because basically she would paid that money into a criminal's bank account. Um, and very sadly, um, at the end of the day, she was unable to get the money back from the bank. Um, and also, um, she was unable to get the money through the financial ombudsman as well. So sadly, her life savings of £45,000 went just in two days. How oh, that's horrible. It's so horrible to hear stories like that. Mm. Um, I wondered if um, John and Paul, if we had any... Um, similar sorts of um, stories or warnings um, in, in uh, at Citizens Advice. John, could I ask you first, please? Yes, I mean, uh, as Tracy says, the, the number of financial scams is on the increase and we get lots of them of the sort that, that Tracy was talking about. It's worth noting that the Financial Conduct Authority, who keep an eye on this area, um, issued something like 1,200 specific warnings last year which was 100% up on the number of warnings they've issued in 2019. And given that they've issued about 720 this year so far, uh, I think we can assume that that number will go up again. Wow. Um, we will be sharing um, on our webpage the, um, the link to the Financial Conduct Authority's um, information about this, um, if you're interested in having a look. Um, and Paul, is there anything that you've seen at Aaron and Chichester? 
just in general, obviously, we, we all know everything is increasing across the board in regards to scams. And, and, and last year alone, we did see quite a few people coming to us and speaking about the COVID scams, for example. So again, any way to make people part with their money, it, it is on the increase. But yeah, we, we, are, we are here. What we do find, though, is that people um, are a little bit more aware of scams now. But obviously, as COVID has been here and lockdown, they're now changing their tactics and they're becoming very, very clever. Uh, and people are only coming to us when, when they're struggling to retrieve that money. But, you know, we are here all the time. So even if you see something, don't forget, we are here. You are not alone in this. Don't be ashamed. We can all be caught out. But yet we have seen a slight rise there, uh, with, with, during co coronavirus and lockdown as well. So. Thank you, Paul. So it's really in, um, important um, to be aware um, of, of these things and to know how to protect yourself. And I just wondered, um, Tracy, can you help us? Um, how can people protect themselves from um, this sort of financial scam? Um, yeah, well, there are several ways, um, but most importantly, um, don't give any money or bank details to anyone you don't know or have only met online. Um, be very wary of unexpected contact. Uh, be cautious of um, investment opportunities, uh, particularly when they seem too good to be true. Um, and seek professional advice um, before uh, making any decisions or speak with family and friends. Um, that's the advice that I'd give, really. And would that professional be, advice be from, from somebody like, like yourselves um, at Trading Standards or from Citizens Advice? Or who, who would people be best to contact? I mean, ourselves, Citizens Advice, yeah. um, the police if need be, if it's something that's happened, um, you know, in a short space of time, that it's worth contacting the police. But just speak to anybody, really. Ideally, before you make that transaction, um, but certainly, once you've committed yourself, um, you think, you know, you've given over your bank details or personal information, certainly speak to somebody, anybody, straight away, and somebody will be able to help you. Thank you, Tracy. Um, John, is there anything you can add um, to that, please? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, research whoever you're dealing with as far as you can. Um, for example, almost all financial services firms um, must be authorised by the FCA, um, and if they're not, it's probably a scam. Um, you can check with the FCA's financial services register to see if a firm, or an individual even, is authorised or registered with them. Uh, if they are, it's a good sign that they're probably reputable. Um, be extra careful if the contact you have is overseas. Um, if you can't check a firm is authorised with a regulator in that country, um, don't transfer money to them. Um, and obviously, uh, again, uh, use the FCA warning list to check the risks of potential investment. Thanks, John. And um, as I said before, there's a link to um, the FCA scams page on our own um, web page for this webinar. So just generally, what can people do to spot scams. Um, I think we would all um, advise before you make any decisions um, to just take a breath, take it slowly to consider what you're being offered um, or what you're being asked to do. Don't rush into any decisions. Um, but is there anything more specific that people should be looking out for? Paul, could I ask you please? Yeah, well, generally, I mean, let's go from the start. If it seems too good to be true, let's be fair. We've all received those emails where they say you've won a competition or something like that. And you think, oh, brilliant. Just like it's clear said, take a moment, breathe, think. Did you even enter in this first place? You know, because that's the thing is we, we're all very, very busy. So sometimes it's too good to be true. It generally is, especially through digital platforms. Uh, and they're now using text messaging service as well. We've seen that. And, and that's an increase as well having a text message. Um, again, if you've got somebody uh, contact you unexpectedly, um, I'll tell you a story about that one uh, shortly. Um, so I've got some, uh, there's quite, quite some great stuff here, actually. Um, I mean, if you've been urged to respond quickly, that's a good one. Um, you know, it's, you need to take action now. We've all had that phone call where somebody's saying that it's the inland revenue. 
uh, you know, you need to act now, but it's all automated. It's a robotic voice, essentially. You know, again, that's very strange to receive something like that, making you act straight away. So if it's making you do it right now, well, well, hang on, shouldn't you have had a, a, a letter to the door or so, so on and so forth? So, I mean, you should receive an update before you get, that, get to that point. Um, so uh, if you've been asked to pay for something urgently or in an unusual way, so if you've been asked to pay for something which you wouldn't normally pay, so if you normally do it by a direct debit, and all of a sudden they're asking you to do it through a, a different form of bank transfer or via a different sort of digital media, always think, stop and think about that because that's always a good way to flag something up as well. Um, and then if you've been asked to give away any personal information, any information, it doesn't matter what it is, it could be the color of your cat, you know, they, why would you want to know this kind of thing? Just, just have a moment, breathe and think, why would you want to know that? You know, because all these things that we give away, such as, again, on social media, which I'll go into in a second, such as certain colors, your mother's maiden name, all these kind of things, they're all actually forms and ways to unlock your password, your account. Um, and I don't want to be fear-mongering here at all, because obviously digital is a brilliant place for us to all connect. But at the same time, unfortunately, people are misusing it. Um, so just take that moment, take a breath whenever you can, because we all live a hectic life at the moment. Um, but if it feels too good to be true, it probably is. That's a really great reminder. And um, as, you, as you said, you have a really good example um, of a social media scam um, that, you, that, you, that you're aware of. I wondered if you would be happy to yes. share that with us. Well, well I mean, my mum, I'm going to give you a little anecdote here, essentially, from my personal experience. And it's, um, I've, I've experienced them myself and my mum's experienced them quite a lot recently through social media. And one of those reasons is, I was explaining to my mum, is that one of the reasons it's because we've all been on social media so much recently because of the lockdown periods. It's been our only way to communicate to each other. It's been our only way to connect with uh, not so much the outside world with our next door neighbors even. So we've been using it a lot more. But what you don't realize is your social media profiles have a lot of information on there, such as your school, your friends, your this, your that, your favorite color, your movies that you like, uh, pictures of your dog, your cat. Um, and unfortunately, uh, my mum used to love joining these sort of, um, you know, I'm so-and-so this this year, I'm going to, you know, my future holds, I'm going to be married in 2022 and all these kinds of things. And they are, some of them are quite fun, but what you don't realize is when you're doing these, these um, sort of fun things on social media, they're data collected. And when you go in and you log into there, they're asking you straight away, they're immediate, they are quite open about it. But because we see everybody else doing it, we think it's safe. It doesn't mean it's safe, you know? And what they're doing is they're taking certain details such as your email address when you log in, or they'll take, or they'll ask for your friends lists. Now what happens then is, for example, my mum, she received a message from her friend stating that she'd won a lot of money and do you want to do you want to know how I did this and my mum responded saying oh hang on is this a scam or have you been caught have you been hacked and but my mum took that moment because she's experienced a lot of this recently where if you go back two or three years ago potentially there was a very big chance that my mother would have clicked those links gone through and before you know just by clicking that link sometimes unfortunately they've got you you know um but I just want to reiterate what's really, really important here. Because again, I don't want to go down the route of fear mongering people when it comes to social media, because it is a wonderful tool for us all to connect. You know, if you do get caught, don't be ashamed, take back control, come and speak to us. We are here, you know, whether it's the, the individuals at the trading standards or at citizens advice, you are not alone and you're definitely not the first person to go through it either. Okay, so my mum did, she nearly got caught there. I've actually been caught a few times, uh, believe it or not, you know, and I'm pretty um, ahead of the game, as they say. So it doesn't matter. It, they do not discriminate when it comes to age, gender or, or, or anything. So please, you're not alone. Don't be ashamed. And we can help you take that back control. Absolutely. And, and, and like we've said, you know, scammers are, are really clever and they use very sophisticated methods. Um, to try to catch you so you know if you do fall for something then as paul said you're, you're absolutely not the first and you won't be the last sadly um thanks paul for sharing that example um so john 
would you be able to give us um, some tips on how people can generally protect themselves from scams? Yes, um, I mean, obviously, to pick up on things that Tracy and Paul has already said. So uh, don't be rushed into making quick decisions. Um, it's OK to take your time and a reputable company will understand that. Uh, never give money or personal details like passwords or bank details to anyone you don't know, uh, trust or only met online. Um, before you buy anything, check it out. Check out the company website you're using. Read any reviews on, on sites. Um, search for the company's details on that company's house. Uh, just take a good look at the terms and conditions. Um, lots of us don't read the terms and conditions of, of things we see, but it is important, particularly if you're going to give them quite a lot of money to do so. Um, pay by debt, debit or credit card. That gives you additional protection. Um, as I said before, be suspicious. Um, scammers can be really smart. So just think about things like that. Um, more generally, make sure your antivirus software is up to date so it can protect you. Um, and similarly, keep online accounts secure. Uh, use strong passwords for email accounts and bank accounts. Um, use passwords that you don't use elsewhere. Um, and there are tools that you could use to, to, to improve on your passwords. Um, and finally, if you're not sure about something, get advice from a trusted source. Thank you, John. That's all really, really sensible um, advice. Um, what, in the situation where um, someone finds that despite everything that they've tried to do, they have unfortunately been at the wrong end of a scammer and they have um, been scammed, what, what should someone do then? Tracy, could you, could you help us with that, please? Yes, well, if you think you have fallen for a scam, um, you know, our best advice is to contact your bank immediately. Um, let them know what's happened. Um, what they'll do is that they'll uh, put a marker on your account to, to show that, you know, you are vulnerable and to look out, they'll look out for scams in the future. But they'll also issue you with a new debit card. Um, immediately and they'll cancel that other one that's been compromised um you know it's um change your login details as well on all your accounts um using sort of safe passwords but certainly change um uh login details to them fairly quickly if your computer allows you to because if it's been infected by a virus um it may come up with lots of warning signs on the computer screen you will then probably need to take your computer somewhere to get the viruses removed um, so that then they can't sort of track your login details then in the, in the future. Um, and there might be ways um, that um, they, oh, sorry, there might be ways that they can get it back. Uh, you can tell your bank what happened straight away. Um, if they've paid for something by, uh, bank transfer, by card, direct debit, PayPal, <coughs> excuse me, um, then depending on the circumstances, you might be able to actually help them, uh, help you get the money back. Um, and we can't give too much advice on this today because it really does depend on individual circumstances. Um, but if you're confused or need support, um, then please contact Citizens Advice. Thanks, Tracy. Um, that's, that's really, really helpful. Um, and there is one final thing that we do need to talk about. Um, who do you talk to? How do you report a scam? Um, it's so important to talk to someone if you're worried. Um, it helps the authorities to stop the criminals and it protects others as well. Um, but Paul, how can people in West Sussex um, report scams? There you go. I did the typical Zoom thing and I went all quiet there. I do apologize. Um, so that we all get caught up to me somehow. Um, so basically everything that we're going to be, we, we are discussing, Claire, obviously is going to be on our, we have resources on our webpage and things like that. So anything that is discussed, it's, you can get it all there. But generally, I mean, if you are worried about a scam, um, again, don't panic. You're not the first and you're definitely not the last. Give us a ring. Give us a call. And the number we've got here is 0808. 
0803-221-133. That's 0808-223-1133. We'll pass on your details on the trading standards, uh, trading standards and obviously we can look into that for you. Uh, we do have our scam action services as well on our website. And obviously we'll have everything on our web resources there. Um, and you can also report to the scam, um, any scams to the action fraud there. So, okay. Thank you. Yeah, as Paul said, um, make sure you report um, the scam um, to action fraud. Um, they'll give you a crime reference number um, and that can be really helpful if you need to tell your bank that you've been scammed. But also, um, don't forget that you can also contact our, our local citizens advice um, services um, for help and all of the details um, will be shared alongside this webinar on social media um, and on our website too. Um, and finally, this is also really important. Talk to people you know, talk to your friends and your family, yes. share your experiences, let your community know um, if you've been approached, if you think that, that you've been scammed, because word of mouth um, is so important in um, stopping scammers um, and helping to just raise that local awareness um, and, and, and help people know what they need to look out for. Um, so that's the end of our webinar today. Um, that's unfortunately all that we've got time for. Um, but I'd just like to say thank you so much to all of our guests. Um, Tracy from Trading Standards in West Sussex, John, um, our experienced citizens advice um, advisor, and Paul, um, our communications and campaigns manager from Aaron and Chichester Citizens Advice. Thank you so much for um, taking the time today um, to share this information. It's been an absolute whistle stop tour. Um, you can watch it again on social media um, or share it with your friends and family. Please, please spread the word. Um, Take a look at our website. There's lots of information on the National Citizens Advice website as well, trading standards, action fraud, help is available. Um, don't forget to get in touch if you think that you've been scammed. Visit our website for further information. Um, and thank you all for joining us today. Goodbye. Bye -bye.